on, everybody? Karate Kid Fanatics back here again. We have another very special guest today, Kevin Allison Emil from Cobra Kai Season 4, Episode 1. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks so much. Good to be here. Something I can help you with, bud? You have a Habsburg jawline. <laughs> I've never seen one quite so perfect. <laughs> what nice new friends you have, Nantarians. Yeah, so before, you know, we get into your uh, role on Cobra Kai Season 4, how'd you initially get into the acting uh, business? Oh, I went to, I was way, way, way into my high school theater group. Uh, you know, I kind of knew since I was a little kid that I wanted to be an artist of some sort, you know, most likely a performing artist of some sort. But in the, you know, in high school, I got so into theater that I, I, decided I should definitely go to film school. So I went to NYU uh, in 1988. <laughs> and yeah. uh, that's where I met the fellow members of the sketch comedy group, The State. And The State had a show on MTV for a few years in the, in the 90s. And that's how the guys from Cobra Kai knew about me from, from the right. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, did uh, they contact you or did you audition for the role? Oh, it's interesting. You know, like it, it, for legal reasons, people often have to audition for roles, you know, like uh, in, right. in order so that it's fair and other people have been given a shot for something. So, yeah, they contacted my manager and uh, said they'd like me to audition. So I sent in uh, – this was – I don't know, you know, things were still pretty locked down, you know, but I think lots right. of auditions are now happening via video camera. So they right. sent me some sides and I read the sides, you know, just put it, set it all up in my living room. And, right. uh, and it was fun. It was fun. They responded right away that they wanted me to do it. And then that's when they revealed, oh my God, we were big fans of the state and they were especially big fans of a sketch that I did on the state called Dream Guy, where okay. I'm this very arrogant guy with a goatee <laughs> and slicked back hair who's very kind of pretentious and insulting. Um, so they thought that this character of Emil could be kind of like that kind of, you know, probably gay and you know uh kind of pretentious and a little weird in in you know flamboyant right. in some ways right. yeah 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 did you uh get to improvise for any of your stuff was all your stuff just script no you know what like um the the lead actors uh they need room so that they can improvise if need be and so for smaller roles around them i think it's just a lot easier if the smaller roles just stick to what they're gonna say so that if, if there is some you know futzing around or, or ad-libbing or trying new things out that's gonna mostly be the the lead actors you know and, and the directors and producers you know making little last minute suggestions to them you know See so that so you want to be supportive that way by giving them something they can count on. Yeah, what was it like, you know, getting the film? Was y'all stuff in uh, Florida for your? It scenes? was. It was uh, Jacksonville, and at the time, it was a lot of places were still on lockdown at that particular time, so it was a little confusing and nerve wracking as to what exactly we were doing. But Absolutely. I will say that that the the I was so one of the things that I love the most about working on any sort of film or TV project is when you have a real sense that the creators are just good people, you know, are, are right. like fun to hang out with. I mean, because you spend so much time on a oh, film yeah. or TV set just having to hang, hang out because it takes so long. Waiting, um, yeah. Yeah, and I was just very impressed with everybody, uh, how kind of sweet and fun and casual it was. They know they have a fun show. Right, right. <laughs> and so they lean into that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so for you, uh, what was your favorite part of the whole experience? Well, I would say that it, I hadn't been on camera 
in a long time. I create a uh, podcast called Risk, where people tell true stories that they never thought they'd dare to share in public. Uh, right. I've been creating Risk since 2009, and we do radio style stories. We do stories told live on stage. It, it, it has a lot of moving parts and a lot Absolutely. of of production goes into the podcast. So I really haven't had time to be auditioning for on camera stuff in a long time. And so that was the biggest joy. Yeah. At first I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to be rusty? Uh, you know, or oh, yeah. are they going to think I'm, you know, you know, like having done sketch comedy with the state, I think a lot of sketch comedians, when they're on any other sort of project that's not sketch comedy, the first thing you worry about is, am I being too big? <laughs> am I being right, too right. am I being too cartoonish and too sure. too too much energy, too broad? Uh, because when you do sketch comedy, you're bound to be kind of cartoonish and big, you know? Right, right. Yeah, so sometimes it's really fun to have that difference where what you're saying, like my whole line about you have the perfect uh, Habsburg jawline. Jawline, yeah. yeah. it's just totally absurd, but yeah. it's fun to act it out as if you are like a real person and like you're trying yeah. to have a legitimate conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The the whole what was funniest about that whole scene is John Kreese, you know? Yeah. His uh <laughs> it was just really fun to try it different ways because his reactions are what it's all about. It's all right. about him being a fish out of water in that scene. Yeah, I love I love the scene when you go I never knew you went in a karate phase and do like the karate chop. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's just yeah, priceless yeah. on that. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea you had a karate phase. Karate is not a phase. It's a way of life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very funny. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah what, what was it like, you know, getting to work with, you know, Martin Cove and all the other actors? Oh, my gosh. All really great. All very professional, very nice, very, like, you know, personable. There was no need to be nervous about anything. Right. The, also, the costume people, the makeup people, everyone was so chill that uh, it was just very reassuring. I just had nothing but fun, really. And yeah, I, I really kind of admired the the way that the leads were very flexible, very, I mean, listen, we were out on the beach, basically. That right. house it was out on the beach. And the sun was blazing right in our faces. Oh, yeah. um, and there was kind of nothing that could be done about that. You know, I mean, I mean, right. they did have yeah. like, umbrellas and stuff like that. But but when we were filming, we Absolutely. just had to go with, you know, blazing yeah, yeah. directly on us. So you can see how some people, you know, some like, arrogant actors might get all bent out of shape about something like that but everyone was totally cool and we and we ended up having fun anyway did you eat any of that tofu <laughs> no <laughs> we were not allowed to eat any of the prop food um ah. but i had no desire to also yeah. you know and yeah. then all those drinks were just like you know water with food coloring added you know yeah 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 so from what you have seen of the show, for you as a fan, would you say you're Team Cobra Kai or Team Miyagi-Do? <laughs> I, I, I guess I would say I'm Team, you know, uh, uh, Daniel and um, uh, what's his name? The uh, Now that they've teamed up. Johnny, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's funny because when I was, what was I? I must have been in the seventh or eighth grade when Karate Kid, the first Karate Kid film came out. And it was one of those weird things where the movie studio had sent to my grade school um, yeah. 
uh, like some sort of like marketing person to share i think it was scholastic magazine was doing a feature on this new movie that was coming out soon called the karate kid and so they had some marketing guy come into our school and share yeah. with us i did to see this movie and it worked everyone yeah. wanted to see the movie um then i ended up you know when i was 16 years old i guess because it would have been maybe illegal otherwise for me to be working uh otherwise but i uh was working at sort of a kind of a grindhouse movie theater like a, a movie right. theater that was showing stuff that had been released a while back you know a couple you know right, not, not right. first run stuff um and we had the karate kid for a long time and i remember i had a crush on ralph macchio i i actually i actually had a crush on him from when he was on Eight is Enough. Eight is Enough oh, was a, yeah. Yeah, it was a super popular show about a family that had eight kids. And then he, just for, I don't know, a few episodes, he played a runaway or a foster kid that they kind of took in for a little while. And um, so I, I saw him on TV. And, you know, like when I was growing up, like it was like the late 70s, early 80s. So it was like, not a time, not a happy time for a kid to be gay. You know, I was very right, closeted right. and very scared about all that kind of stuff. But when I was 16 and we had Karate Kid at that little theater that I worked at, I would time it so that I would see that crane kick every yeah, time yeah. the movie ran. I would run, you know, from behind the popcorn counter into the movie theater to watch that crane kick because i always love that scene so much so it was a shame that i didn't get to meet him because he's he wasn't a part of that he's scene awesome. at, at all right 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 um but uh but yeah 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 so so that movie was really big for people of my generation oh, yeah. yeah for sure who would have thought years later you'd be you know on screen with his nemesis from the first movie I know. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So for you uh, as an actor, what is your uh, next goal you'd like to achieve? Well, you know, it's interesting. Like this is kind of lit up in me a little bit thinking, hey, you know what, maybe I could take on some of my own sketch comedy again. I'm trying to figure out because I am running a business of my own. I'm trying to figure out how much time do I have for pursuing other things and one thing i thought was that i could make some of my own comedy sketches you know with right. with uh uh you know just putting them up on youtube or having people animate them having friends animate them so i'm this year 2022 what i've promised myself is i'm going to be doing uh morning pages every morning at you know like where you just uh free write for like a half hour and then like creative writing, just like random creative writing of all kinds, writing stories and sketches and poems and whatever comes to mind in order to figure out what can I do? Because it's very hard to be running a business with two podcasts and a storytelling school uh, and then find time to do other creative stuff. But right. I feel like I really need it. I feel like I really need it. You know, like one of the things about being a creative person is it's important to be trying new things as much as you can in order to keep the juices flowing. Yeah. And to uh, close out, uh, I know you touched on it a little bit earlier about your podcast risk, but uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what it's about and where people can find it? Absolutely. Risk is wherever you find your audio podcasts, um, but you can also find it at our, our website, risk-show.com. It's where people tell true stories they never thought they'd dare to share in public. So it's very uncensored. Um, stories might be rather sexual or, you know, dark and violent things might happen sometimes, but a lot of stories are also just outrageously funny. What we're encouraging right. people to do on the show is to share about, oh, some of the most crazy or emotional or meaningful things that have happened to them over the course of their life. And we really coach them. We do a lot of coaching behind the scenes to help them get really intimate and detailed and really bring the stories to life. So, 
that is out and about and then we're coming out with a new podcast called real this year as well which will also be a, a storytelling podcast but that one won't be that on that one will be safe for work you, you can play it if your right, kids are right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 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 i just uh want to thank you for coming on congrats on season four and your podcast and everything else and uh, uh thanks again for coming on thank you thank you it was my pleasure mm -hmm.